Yo, 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 what's good with it? It's the homie Mac. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, 82 Kings, ASAP. You should have been done it. Uh, but yeah, if you keep coming here, stop playing with me, stop playing with yourself. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, 82 Kings. Uh, follow the movement on Instagram, at, 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 at MacTV underscore 82. Um, yeah, let's get to it. This is another session of uh, Mac in with Mac, which is, um, as I stated earlier, it's my um, series of book reviews. Hey, my chair is just on some other, other shit today. But yeah, um, the book that I will be reviewing today, none other than Behold a Pale Horse. You see that? Um, it was written by uh, William Cooper. It was published by um, Light Technology Publishing. Um, so let's see, uh, people that know me know me, that, people that know me <laughs> know, yeah, people that know me do know me, uh, but the people that know me know that I'm a big Wu-Tang head, I'm a Wu-Tang baby, and, uh, part of the Wu-Tang family tree, or Wu blood kin, as they say, uh, was a group called Killer Army. Killer Army had this album called, uh, Silent Weapons for Choir Wars, and I remember, um, looking it up on the internet, the title of the album, and I came across this book called Behold a Pale Horse, written by William Cooper. Um, clearly they got that title for their album from this book, Behold a Pale Horse, Behold a Pale Horse, Behold a Pale Horse. Um, yeah, so Silent, Silent Weapons Require Wars, again, it's, it's a chapter within this book, and I, fi I figured that out when I did my um, internet search when I was in middle school. Um, but yeah, years later, years later down the line, uh, when I was in college, uh, probably like my sophomore year of college, I found this book in the school library. Not no, no, not the school in the school bookstore. In the school bookstore, Tougaloo College, the school bookstore. Sophomore year of college, found it, and I, this book is what 500 pages. I dove into this thing head first. Uh, there's a whole litany of information. Um, but the thing that really stood out to me about this book, well, one of the things, rather, is um, how he started this book. He said, the ideas and conclusions expressed in this work are mine alone. It is possible that one or more conclusions may be wrong. The purpose of this book is to convince you, the reader, that something is terribly wrong. It is my hope that this work will inspire you to begin an earnest search for the truth, an earnest search for the truth. Your conclusions may be different, but together maybe we can build a better world. That's real shit. He's basically saying, like, look, um, these are the conclusions that I have uh, arrived to. Some of them, again, some of them are right, some of them are wrong. But, you know, if you find some shit that I didn't find or see, let's build the pieces together and make this a better world. Because at the end of the day, something is terribly wrong. Uh, but, yeah, this book, a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, some of the things that he said in this book have been true. There are things in this book that allude to 9-11. There are things that allude to, uh, what, the Sandy Hook shooting, uh, the, school, the shooting down at that school in Florida. I forgot the name of it. And um, just mass shootings in general. And he was basically saying how, um, you know, the essentially the powers that be, they want to, They want you to sacrifice your freedoms. They want. They want you to give certain things up. So in order for you to feel the need to sacrifice your freedoms and give things up, um, you'll need. You'll. You'll do that if you feel that it's under the guise of protection. So a lot of these school shootings, all these things with crisis actors or whatnot, um, some of it does seem contrived. Um, I think they are tragedies. But my thing is like when you say somebody is a crisis actor. To me, that just makes me feel like this whole thing is like a simulation, like it's not real, or like it's, again, contrived. Um, and I'm not trying to um, uh, demean tragedy or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm apathetic to the lives that were lost. But again, uh, it just, something makes me wonder. Um, but one of the chapters that I want to talk about in the book is uh, Anatomy of an Alliance. Now, in this chapter, um, it basically... It talks about secret societies. Um, you got uh, Scroll and Key, which I think is at uh, Harvard. Then you got, um, what else you got? You got, uh, what's the other one? Um, Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones at Yale. 
and he talks about the different rituals. Um, he says things that lead to that uh, that allude to uh, Bohemian Grove, and how you have these different government figures from these different secret societies that get together, and they meet at Bohemian Grove, which is like this encampment in California. Um, I, I think the thing that's really dope about this book is it, it traces the steps. It does, he doesn't just give you names like he, he, he gives you names he gives you organizations and he and he uh pretty much expounds on how, how how the dots connect you know which i think is really dope there's even he has transcripts and things in here too but again let me read something from a uh, anatomy of an alliance uh he says let me find it the new world order will eliminate the population threat in several ways Complete control of individual behavior may be established using electronic or chemical implants. No one will be allowed to have a child without permission. Stiff penalties wait for those who ignore the law. The violent, the old, the infirm, the handicapped, and the unproductive will be killed. Private, private property will be established. So he's basically, um, I know that's kind of intense. He's basically uh, alluded to a totalitarian state. And when you talk about the, he mentioned like, like electronic uh, implants and chips. Uh, it makes me kind of wonder, um, you know, about the whole neuro, the whole Neuralink technology, where things will be implemented into people, into people's brain, and essentially people can be engineered or download, or, or things things can be downloaded into their mind. And uh, it makes me wonder, could somebody, um, you know, use have a nefarious intention behind that and flip it and uh, use it against society? Um, I, I would say that the the main thing that I got from this book wasn't so much, there's a lot of conspiracy theory. Uh, I felt like some of it may have been conjecture, um, but I wasn't in his head, so I wasn't there, because you know he said he saw um, a UFO emerge out of the water. Um, he says a lot of things in this book where I was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure, homie. But, not, and that's not to demean him or take away from his, his uh, premise. But the main thing that I walked away walked away with from this book is if you consider yourself a good person, you have to take an active stance against injustice. You have to take an active stance uh, against things that are a threat against humanity. You know, and he makes a point to say in this book, like despite our differences, um, let me find it. Oh yeah, we must learn to accept individual responsibility for the world's problems, or be willing to live by the terms of those who do. We must learn to love one another, share, de share, deplore violence, and work with nature, not against it. We must all we we must do all this while colonizing the universe. Um, he also alludes the uh, you know aliens. Um, I can't corroborate that. I can't negate that. I guess I'm kind of on the fence about that. I'm open to it though. Um, but yeah, this. Uh, this book, um, again, the main thing that I got from it, I think I kind of danced around that. The main thing I got from it was critical thinking. You know, uh, just to, to question why I feel the things I feel, to question my biases, to question my, my feelings, to question my own paradigm. Why do I, why do, why do I um, take the stances that I have? Have I been conditioned? Am I being brainwashed? Is Because uh, I, I very much think social engineering is a reality. And I think a lot of that uh, social engineering, that it actually, um, it comes through uh, film, film, media. Um, and there's a chapter in here, I can't uh, recall the exact, exact chapter, but in essence he's saying how like, you know, the media is, is, is a scam. There's not a whole lot of truth. There's a lot of sensationalism. There's not a lot of uh, journalistic integrity. Uh, there are a lot of uh, biases that are being propagated. Uh, but yeah, again, this book, I can go on and on about this book. Uh, William Cooper, again, he was uh, born in um, Long Beach, California in uh, 1943, I think May 6, 1943. Uh, he grew up in a military family. He, um, what else? He, he, was a, he was originally in the Air Force and he became a Naval officer. Um, I think he became disillusioned by the government and different things that were going on because you can see in this book how he goes from having this pro-government, I'm an American patriot, 
Like he just went hard. Like he's red, white, blue, USA all day. And then after a while, you could tell like as he uh, dig deeper and did some research and he did see that, you know, this government isn't all that it's cracked up to be. You know, and I think I, I will consider him an American patriot because I think he was in love with the idea of America. Um, the only thing that I would say that I didn't agree with him on was um, he didn't believe that the concept of racism existed, which is beyond me. I understand that race is not a biological uh, reality. It is, an indeed, it is indeed a social construct. Um, but irrespective of if it is scientifically proven to be true or not, it still is a social reality and people act as such. So to say that racism doesn't exist, uh, I, I can't quite process that. Um, but yeah, he had a, um, uh, I think it was like an AM radio talk show. Uh, it was called uh, The Hour of the Time, where he talked about uh, uh, ancient uh, societies, you know, societies of antiquity, secret societies. He talked about masonry a lot. Um, he had a lot of good stuff, stuff that I think, if nothing else, will make you think and uh, question, your, question your reality, or at least how you process reality. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, um, I, I want to say the U.S. Marshals were after, after uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh, I think they were getting him for tax evasion. There are a lot of conspiracies about that. But uh, eventually, he, he had a standoff in uh, Eager, Arizona. And uh, I think he actually killed a deputy. It was an Apache County deputy. And uh, Mr. Cooper died himself. He was uh, taken down by gunfire. But yeah, great book. Great read, great book. I encourage everybody to read this. This book um, uh, had a heavy influence on my paradigm. Uh, gave me some anxiety, <laughs> but I've been able to move past it. Uh, but yeah, like, share, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, ADs Who Kings. I got music in the description. Uh, I got a link to this book where you can purchase it. Uh, peace and love to all. Oh yeah, rock with the movement on Instagram, at MacTV underscore 82. Peace and love. It's your boy Mac signing out from the Dogon. Be easy.